Welcome back to this second episode of the continuation passing style lecture. In this lecture we're going to talk about composition of continuations. But before we get to, to that we're going to recap uh, what continuations are. Continuations are just callback functions, plain and simple, where um, you call a function and that function instead of uh, passing uh, returning the, the, the result of the computation, it will pass the result to the callback function that you gave it. And that, or it might uh, call another function and pass the callback with it, and so on and so on. But eventually, at some point, your callback will get called and something will happen. And you could also have multiple callback functions. So that was the essence of continuation passing. We looked in the previous uh, session, we looked at uh, a few examples. We looked at how to implement uh, uh, Pythagoras theorem using continuation passing. And in, in this session, we're gonna look at another example. And this is uh, a sort of a slightly contrived example, but, but uh, shows the point quite nicely. It's called thrice. What it does, is simply call a function three times on a value. So here you can see uh, the direct uh, style implementation thrice f and x, where f is a higher order, or, or thrice is a higher order function, taking a function and a value, and then it applies it three times on x. And you can see there's you just explicitly calling it three times, or the sort of more f sharpy way of doing it using using the pipeline. But below it you can see the continuation passing version of it. And it's a little bit hard to see what's going on if, if you look quickly at it. But basically what you do is that you get a the function f has now become a function which takes a value and returns a continuation. And then we just give it a normal value so that it can continue. And uh, the whole thing is, of course, going to return a, uh, a continuation. So that's why we have a, it, it returns a lambda function in K, which is sort of the final continuation that we will pass in. And then you see that we call F on X, and that will return a continuation, or as in this example, uh, some generic type B to R, which when called will give us an R. Now, we don't have one, but we will automatically construct one so that we can call it another a second time. And we do that by constructing a lambda function uh, and with an argument fx. And then we call f a second time using that argument. But now we need to call it a third time. And again, it needs a continuation. So we construct the continuation simply by uh, creating a lambda function and thus ch chaining the whole thing together. And then we call f uh, on, on the ffx uh, argument. And then finally um, we, pass, we pass k into f, which is the sort of closing continuation, which completes the computation. Now, if you look very carefully at this function, you can see that there's a, there's a very clear pattern uh, where we are uh, chaining these uh, functions. So, the, so if you look at the sort of line below fun k, the lambda function, you will see that f applied to x, and then there's a new lambda function. Now, f applied to x will simply return a continuation which we can think of as a, a sort of a, a value that needs to be, or it's a function value, so it needs to be applied to something. So fx is kind of this continuation value, and then we apply that to a lambda function, and then we do the same thing again. We again get this f fx, which after being applied will just be another sort of continuation value that needs to be applied, and so on, and so on, and so on. And we can see that there is a pattern here. And we can, we can actually abstract that away into a, a chaining function. 
So let's call that chain and, and uh, define it like this. There's an M, which is simply a value from A to R, returning an R. So this is our continuation. So if we go back to the previous slide and we look here where it says FX, F, FX, and F, FFX. Those are all of the same, that type that I have called M here. And then we have the, the F, which is a function which takes an A and returns a continuation. And then I leave it as an exercise to, to, to you to, to actually verify that this chaining uh, function that I have given here is in fact a correct one. You can you can you can implement it and test it, and you, but you need to sit down and, and think a little bit about it because it's it's not entirely trivial. Now, if we look at at the signatures and instead use the type the content type that we introduced last lecture, uh, just to make things a little bit more readable, we can look at this chain uh, uh, signature and see that oh, there's a see yeah, so use an S instead of M. But the M should be in principle a cont of R A, and then the second argument is a function which takes an A and returns a cont of R B, and the whole thing should return a, a cont R B. Now, if you if you look at this, you should recognize it because we have seen it before, quite a few times during this course. And you will see that this is in fact just the sort of um, the, the, the pipe operator for these embellished types. This is simply the bind operator for a monad or a computation expression. So it, it actually, if we create a module called cont, we can create a bind function and it's just this chain function. And that allows us to do write this thrice function, thrice m fx by partially applying the, the pipe to x to create a sort of a continuation type and then we can just bind it with f3 times. Now if we go back and look at this slide here you see the, the, the green uh, commented out version on top where you have x getting piped into f getting piped into f getting piped into f and we go back, you can see that we have exactly the same structure here, but now using continuations. So let's have a quick look how this looks in code. So first, uh, let's implement the thrice function. I haven't implemented it twice just for the sake of it. So let's call thrice and then use the add two to three and then pipe it into our print function and see how, how this works. So let's add that, let's add that, and we can see that indeed we do get 9 down in the terminal output. So that's that's the sort of a trivial, that's the trivial version of it. So now if we take this thrice CPS instead, which is sort of a little bit messy but uh, not, not too terrible, and uh, let's uh, let's run that. And again, we can see down in the terminal that calling thrice CPS with add CPS two and three, and then print as the final continuation, we do also get nine. So that seems to work. So let's do the chaining function. And now I've uh, now I've uh, also created this shove operator or bind operator for it, just as an alias to this chain so that I can use it inline. And um, let's, see if, let's see if it works. So let's do the thrice m and see if it works. And if you look down in the terminal, you can see that indeed, again, it worked. So it seems that uh, my chaining operator definition was indeed the correct one. Okay, so let's get back to the slides. Now, if this cont R A uh, is a monad in A, then every monad must also be a functor. 
So we can also define a map for it. And um, here's, here's the definition of map for, for the cont RA type. I, in, this is slightly cheating because um, if I would actually use the real cont RA type, I would have to do some wrapping, unwrapping of things and, and it gets messy. So I've just skipped it. But this is the essence of it. So if you want to map F onto a um, value, which is a continuation value, which means it, it's a higher order function in itself, then this is produces a new continuation with the argument G and it applies X to the function composition of f with g. And while we're at it, we can also define sort of the rest of the bits that we need in order to make this a proper monad, which is the return function. So here it's simply creating a new continuation with an f getting applied to x. Oh, that should be x applied to f actually. So then we can, well, once we have these pieces, we can actually uh, we create a continuation builder to create a con uh, computation expression for, for these continuation passing things. And if you remember from the Monad lecture, uh, we do it by creating a, a class, which we can call whatever we want, but I'm just going to call it uh, cont builder, that's the usual convention, um, with an empty constructor, and we create these three methods on it. Bind A to B, which is simply using the R definition of shove. Uh, there's this return, which calls this return definition, and then finally we have return from, which will be uh, so the, the, the return will be the return bang in the computation expression and return from will be just a plain return. And then we say let cont equals cont builder and we create a single singleton object of this cont builder object, call it cont, and then we can use it. And now we're able to write this whole uh, thrice function in a, a fairly sort of nicely readable way, which is uh, using this computation expression. So now I can say let thrice f on x is a cont expression. I call f on x to get x prime. I can call f on x prime to get x prime prime and then I just return bang f on x x prime. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and see how this how this works. Oops. So let's do the cont the functor like that, and then so I, I put this in a module so that I have this cont map and cont ret. I can't use the word return because it's reserved. So let's do the cont builder. Just add that, and now we can go down and implement th thrice using this computation expression like this. So let's feed this into the F sharp interactive and then see how, how it works. There we go. And it produces nine again. So it shows that, that it works. So that was essentially the end of uh, continuation passing style. You might be sitting with a sort of feeling that what was this all about? Uh, this is very complicated and and yeah, not something you would like to do probably. Um, and but in the next lecture, lecture you will actually see how this. How important this is, because then we'll start talking about asynchronous computations, and you will see that this the, the cont uh, computation expression that I generated in in this lecture will very very easily uh, 
be transformed into a async computation expression. So this cont is actually more general than the async. And then we can start doing asynchronous computations, which is extremely important and valuable in today's um, uh, distributed world. So that was that. Um, until next time. Bye.